How a Nighthawk Was Shot Down On March 27, 1999, an F-117 Nighthawk stealth plane was shot down in a historic occurrence during the NATO bombing of Yugoslavia. This incident exposed flaws in cutting-edge military technology and strategies by being the first time a stealth aircraft was effectively targeted and destroyed in combat. The following points outline the key factors that led to this significant occurrence. Number 8. Countermeasures and Intelligence Serbian military worked hard to obtain intelligence on NATO's capabilities and operations patterns before the 1999 NATO bombing campaign. This involved keeping an eye on the time and frequency of airstrikes and being aware of the technology used by NATO aircraft. Serbian military strategists modified their strategies in reaction to this intelligence in order to counter NATO's sophisticated capabilities. They combined older radar systems, such as the P-18, which used lower frequencies that were harder for NATO's radar warning receivers to pick up. They were able to get ready for an encounter by using these systems to detect the F-117 at a range that worked for them. This proactive strategy showed how the benefits of cutting-edge stealth technology might be offset by efficient intelligence collection and flexible countermeasures. Number 7. Context of the Incident The Skunk Works branch of Lockheed Martin produced the groundbreaking F-117 Nighthawk, which represented a major breakthrough in military aviation technology in both design and capabilities. The first aircraft created especially for stealth operations, the Nighthawk was created during the Cold War and used a special angular shape and a combination of materials that absorb radar to reduce its radar cross-section. During the Gulf War in 1991, it made its operational debut by successfully executing undetected precision bombing missions. By 1999, when the Kosovo War broke out, NATO forces were fighting Serbian aggression against ethnic Albanians in Kosovo as part of Operation Allied Force. Serious humanitarian concerns and a complicated geopolitical environment were features of the conflict. The Nighthawk was sent in to strike vital Serbian military targets with precision while causing the fewest possible casualties among civilians. The aircraft's stealth characteristics were supposed to allow it to operate effectively in densely defended regions, providing NATO leaders with confidence in its ability to achieve tactical objectives while decreasing risks to pilots and ground personnel. Number 6. Mission Details On a pivotal mission on March 27, 1999, Lieutenant. Column Dale Zelko piloted Vega 31 to a Serbian command center in Belgrade. The NATO air campaign was seriously threatened by this command center, which was essential to organizing Serbian military activities. Zelko's task was to fly at low altitudes in order to take use of the Nighthawk's stealth characteristics and evade hostile radar systems detection. He got ready for the bomb drop sequence, which needed exact timing and synchronization, when he arrived at the target at about 26,000 feet. Because the Nighthawk was armed with highly accurate laser-guided bombs, it could hit with little collateral damage. This operation was a component of NATO's larger plan to thwart Serbian military activities and aid ground forces fighting in Kosovo. Zelko was able to concentrate on carrying out the mission effectively in spite of the risks because of his faith in the aircraft's cutting-edge technology and his substantial piloting training. Number 5. Loss of Electronic Warfare Support EA-6 B Prowler aircraft first assisted Vega 31 as it reached its target area, providing crucial electronic warfare capabilities. These Prowlers had advanced jamming devices that were intended to interfere with adversary radar and communication networks. By disguising the aircraft's existence, these technologies greatly increased the safety of stealth missions. But as the weather worsened over Belgrade, with poor visibility from rain and clouds, the Prowlers were told to head back to base before Vega 31 could finish its mission. Due to this choice, Zelko's aircraft was deprived of vital electronic defenses that might have prevented enemy discovery. In addition to making Vega 31 more vulnerable, 
The lack of this support exposed a serious operational planning flaw, even sophisticated stealth equipment, may be undermined by conventional radar systems in the absence of electronic warfare support. This incident demonstrated how crucial it is to combine different military capabilities, such electronic warfare platforms and stealth jets, into unified operating plans that optimize their efficacy while lowering risks. Number 4. Radar Detection Serb Colonel Zoltan Dani took the crucial step of turning on his S-125M Neva radar system again after realizing that NATO's electronic countermeasures were no longer in place. As air operations over Serbia increased, it was decided that this medium-range surface-to-air missile system, which had previously been deactivated because of concerns about NATO's electronic warfare capabilities, was now essential for identifying potential threats. In order to get knowledge on NATO flight patterns and tactics, Danny's operators used both radar tracking and intelligence reports. For the first time since the war, Danny's radar operators were able to lock on to Vega 31 as it opened its bomb bay doors, a move that unintentionally boosted its radar cross-section. This event was a major turning point because it showed that when strategically employed in conjunction with human intelligence efforts, conventional radar systems could still successfully oppose cutting-edge stealth technologies. While stealth technology decreased radar visibility, it did not in some circumstances make an aircraft totally undetected as demonstrated by the successful discovery of Vega 31. Number 3. Missile Launch Danny's radar successfully locked onto Vega 31 and his S-125 battery, which had been positioned strategically to protect against airborne threats, unleashed two V-601M missiles. With the S-125 Neva system, which had proven successful against a range of aerial targets, it was possible to engage high-speed aircraft at medium altitudes. Zelko's evasive maneuvers caused the first missile to miss its target. But the second missile's proximity fuse caused it to explode nearby, resulting in a huge explosion that severely destroyed Vega 31's left wing and fuselage. Ejecting was Zelko's last choice after the accident caused catastrophic structural failures that caused him to lose control of the aircraft. This incident not only illustrated the effectiveness of conventional missile systems against state of the art technology, but it also exposed the shortcomings of stealth operations when up against determined adversaries who employ conventional air defense strategies. Number 2. Ejection and Rescue Due to the catastrophic damage caused by the missile explosion, Lt. Colum Zelko ordered his ejection sequence from Vega 31 before it could fall into Serbian territory. Under extremely difficult conditions, this critical operation needed to be executed precisely on time. Successfully ejecting from an airplane involves overcoming several challenges, including high-altitude ejection dynamics and potential hazards from nearby explosion-generated debris or shockwaves. Number 1. Impact on Military Strategy Being the first time a stealth aircraft was shot down in combat, the downing of Vega 31 was a landmark event in military aviation history that had an impact on military circles all over the world. For upcoming missions involving comparable aircraft such as F-22s or B-2s, this incident spurred a thorough examination of operational security procedures and strategies using stealth technology inside NATO. Military strategists understood that although stealth capabilities offered significant benefits in terms of avoiding detection in the best-case scenario, they were not perfect, particularly when confronted with adversaries who successfully used conventional radar systems in conjunction with human intelligence efforts on ground movements or flight patterns detected by reconnaissance techniques like visual spotting or signals intelligence. By focusing on better coordination between air assets like fighter jets and support systems like electronic warfare platforms or reconnaissance drones that can collect real-time data about enemy positions, NATO re-evaluated its strategy for missions involving stealth aircraft in the wake of this incident.
If you liked our video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel.